Today on Bear TV Investigates, we get to the heart of the debate. Does pharmaceutical grade really matter? And are some of the off the shelf chemical options like baking soda just as good for reefing applications? Then like always, give away something cool at the end. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing, with a focus on putting them to the test, and then rate that theory based on our scale of reef fantasy to reef certainty. This week we're going to start a four-part series which seeks to continue the conversation that's been going on for the last 15 years. Are off-the-shelf ungraded or tech-graded alkalinity additives just as good as reefing additives? Just because it has a picture of a fish or coral in the front, does it really mean that it's any better? In addition to that, we've received a ton of questions on our new BRS Pharma line of chems. And do pharmaceutical grade materials really mean it's any better, or at least in a meaningful way where reefers are likely to realize incremental or functional results? I can tell you right now, regardless of which side of the debate that anyone finds themselves identifying with, there are going to be some surprises in this series. There just isn't a clear, one-size-fits-all answer for sure. Even though there are some pretty firm beliefs attached to this topic, I think anyone that goes into this with an open mind will find that there are very few completely right or wrong vantage points, just more informed decisions. In this test, we're going to test alkalinity additives, magnesium additives, calcium hydroxide, and in the last episode, calcium additives. And for each one of those, we're going to test six samples, two different common aquarium additives, two bulk aquarium additives, and then two readily available similar chemicals from other industries, either food or tech grade materials. Today's focus will be the six different alkalinity additives. For the two aquarium additives, we're going to test one of the more popular retail brand aquarium alkalinity additives, which says that it contains sodium bicarbonate, and we'll refer to it as Aquarium 1, as well as Brightwell Aquatics Reef Code BP. Then the two aquarium bulk additives, first of which is a retail aquarium bulk option, which clearly states that it contains sodium carbonate, and we'll refer to it as Aquarium Bulk 1. The second bulk option, of course, being the BRS Bulk Pharma. For the outside industry options, I have two goals. Attempting to find something that the average reefer could fairly easily acquire in a reasonable size, and we attempted to find a food grade option as well as something which might not state a grade, but very likely technical grade. In this case, the food grade option was a simple box of Arm & Hammer baking soda, which is readily available almost everywhere, comes in a reasonable size, both in small boxes, but also a 12 or 13 and a half pound bag, which will last most reefers a year or two. The second option is Arm & Hammer washing soda, which is also available at most big box stores, comes in a reasonably sized affordable box, clearly states sodium carbonate, which is also referred to as soda ash as the only ingredient, and doesn't state a grade, but based on its intended use of cleaning laundry, it's very likely technical grade. I think it's important to note that Arm & Hammer makes zero claims that either of these items are suitable for aquarium use. It would just be a lucky find if they are. So that's the six options. This is a good time to share why two of the options are simply labeled Aquarium 1 and Aquarium Bulk 1. I'm sure everyone watching this would prefer that we share the actual brands, but it's important to me to respect the balance between respect for the community's desire for knowledge and respect for those in the industry who are working hard for the community. I strongly believe it's in everyone's best interest to make the best product possible at a reasonable price point and then share why it's awesome with real data rather than simple claims, but that's really up to the individual companies to make that decision for themselves. I'm not going to make the decision for them. In that spirit, this is a good point to share that originally Brightwell was not part of this experiment. This year's interview, I shared that I was working on this project and Jeremy at Brightwell immediately said that he wanted in and okay with publicly sharing the data even after I reminded them that you can't untest or unshare knowledge. And just like the BRS bulk products, you won't be an absolute best in everything, not always the cheapest option, and how the community responds to that is always a legit risk. His response was they believe in what they offer to the reefing community, attempt to maintain a culture of transparency with most of the bottles, not just listing contents, but also concentrations, and more important than anything, if there is an area they can improve on, Anything that shines light on that allows them to dedicate resources to improving on it. The data is what it is, and they're willing to be transparent to the community. Behind the scenes, I can tell you that this mindset is pretty rare, and to my knowledge, no manufacturer has been willing to expose themselves in this manner. 
So regardless of how this turns out, bravo to them for the transparency. I certainly hope the community helps us create a positive environment where more of the manufacturers are willing to take this risk, step forward and do the same. So this is how we're going to test the materials. I collected the samples from our shelves, ordered a couple that we don't stock here, and went to a big box store for the arm and hammer options. We're going to first take some visual assessments by mixing some up with RODI water and then assessing both clarity as well as total volume of water and solubles. A visual assessment will only tell you so much, but honestly, if you can see it with the naked eye, it's not a trace element. If it turns muddy brown, rusty red, or has a large amount of insoluble crud at the bottom, I don't really care what the ICP MS testing says. I'm personally not going to use it on my reef tank. There are too many other affordable and safe options out there to gamble an often multi-thousand dollar investment in my reef tank and commitment to my pets to use something that I can see with the naked eye is either visually dirty or filled with insolubles and contaminants. Next we sent in six samples to NSL Analytical to be tested with ICP, MS and other methods for 21 parameters. This is 16 individual parameters and a group of heavy metals reported all together. This type of testing should provide a solid window into the suitability for a reefing application. Before we dive in, I'd like to share what I personally expected to see in all this, starting with the aquarium products. I'd certainly like to think that it's reasonable to assume that the aquarium products should perform very well because they were selected for this very specific application. Brightwell's Reef Code BP is the only one that contains additional elements outside of just alkalinity, so I wouldn't be surprised if it performs slightly different. Of the two aquarium bulk brands, both are sodium carbonate, also referred to as soda ash, but knowing firsthand the effort put into finding a USP grade sodium carbonate source, I certainly anticipate that the BRS Pharma will perform better than the option that has no grade listed. On the two out of industry options, I expect the food grade Arm & Hammer baking soda to perform really well, potentially as good as the aquarium chems. Food grade baking soda is a widely used product that has both material, facility, automation and packaging standards that meet the standards for human consumption, which in all honesty is certainly higher than any standard that would ever be created for pet consumption. That said, while a grade absolutely comes with a certain degree of quality assurances, it doesn't mean that it's suitable for any application other than the one that's intended for, so we'll have to see. However, I don't have high hopes for the presumably tech grade washing soda. First off, I've opened a box before and at that time it had a strong soapy perfumed odor with a sudsy film when mixing it up. It's always clearly stated that it contains only sodium carbonate, so my best guess is it's not an additional additive, but rather it could be packaged on the same production line as some perfumed laundry detergents. The facility cleanliness and attention to detail between production runs just doesn't have to meet the same standards as food grade applications. Unless it relates to the ability to clean laundry, I imagine there just isn't a ton of concern about unrelated contaminants. For what it's worth, I've been told by the soda ash manufacturers of the world that the number one global use for tech grade soda ash is indeed an additive in powdered laundry detergents. So at this point, at least some of you are thinking, is this guy out of his mind? Who would ever consider dumping laundry booster or even baking soda in your reef tank? Well, over the years, some of the more adventurous reefers have identified some really awesome do-it-yourself solutions where off-the-shelf materials perform just as good as aquarium-labeled products. Well, that presents an awesome value. It's also kind of led to an assumption that any old tech or food grade material will work, which I can say with 100% certainty is not the case. Anyone attempting that kind of thing is really best served either using something that a critical mass of reefers have used before with very few negative reports. Outside of that, and using random chems, the trailblazers certainly have a tendency to get shot in the back. Part of the issue is most won't be so toxic that everything dies within the first dose. It's really what happens over the course of one or even five years. It used to be that that kind of thing was hard to measure because no one could attribute a coral or even multiple coral deaths to something that they've been dosing for two years. However, now with affordable hobby grade ICP testing from places like Triton, we can start identifying what impurities are entering our tank and identifying the source and remove them before they cause issues or confirm our approach and additive selections are working as intended. In this case, what we're doing here today is actually trying to identify all of this on the front side by using certified lab grade testing on the raw materials so we can use the right products from the very beginning so we don't have to rely as much on ICP testing. Really, just simple peace of mind is the goal. 
Okay, getting to it, taking a quick look at all six different raw materials. They all visibly look clean and white to the eye, with the exception of the washing soda, which does have a very subtle brown tint. I was wrong about the washing soda's odor. This time there is no detectable perfume smell. Could be a different facility is making it now, or it could be something related to production schedule changes. In any case, a perfume smell would have caused me to completely rule it out for a reef tank application, but that isn't the case here. Next, we took 56 grams of each material and mixed it with RODI water to create a liter of solution. You can see the BRS, Aquarium One, Brightwell, and Arm & Hammer baking soda all mixed up crystal clear with no film on the top. However, both of the sodium carbonate or soda ash options with the Aquarium Bulk and washing soda both mixed up with a sudsy film, and not surprisingly, the wash and soda solution had a subtle brown tint, but you'd have to place it next to a clean water solution for most people to recognize it. The suds are probably related to some organics and it isn't inherently bad, but I think it's safe to say that if all other things were to remain the same, including cost, most of us would select an option which mixes crystal clear and a transparent solution without the film. We also poured all the various solutions into our settling cones and there was no visible signs of water and soluble contaminants. All of them performed really well in this regard. All in all, after the visual assessment of all samples, they didn't reveal anything which would exclude us from using any of them. Moving on to the analytical testing, we're going to cover each parameter, highlighting the highest and lowest levels in each case. I'll stop for a quick explanation when appropriate, but the real review will come at the end. I'll put a link to the full report in the video description for anyone who would like to review it. Note there are certified results which largely go as low as one part per million, as well as estimates which go into the part per billion because it later gives a closer window into basically the same results, particularly those that read zero or near. We're going to use those for today's review, but the information is there for anyone who wants to review either. Starting with acid insolubles, all read zero, and same with water insolubles. The BRS Bulk Pharma and Aquarium One had the lowest heavy metals, which include six different elements for a combined total of 0.6 parts per million. Brightwell had the highest with two parts per million. Heavy metals includes eight combined elements with cadmium, lead, barium, chromium, selenium, silver, arsenic, and mercury. Looking at a few of these individually, BRS Pharma had the lowest lead at 0.01 and Aquarium Bulk One was the highest at 0.2. BRS Bulk Pharma also had the lowest arsenic at 0.08 parts per million, and Brightwell was the highest with 0.5 parts per million. Measuring mercury specifically, all samples had zero parts per million mercury. Both BRS Pharma and Aquarium Bulk One were the only ones that read zero aluminum, and the washing soda was the highest at seven parts per million. BRS Bulk Pharma, Aquarium One, Baking Soda, and Washing Soda all had zero boron. Brightwell had 2,000 parts per million, however I wouldn't call it an impurity because that was intentionally added to the reef code BP, something that we'll get to later. The only sample with boron impurities was the Aquarium Bulk One, which had two parts per million. The Baking Soda had the lowest calcium impurity with 29, and the Aquarium Bulk One had the highest with 120. BRS Bulk Pharma, Aquarium One, Brightwell, and Baking Soda all had the lowest copper at two parts per million. The Aquarium Bulk One and Washing Soda both had 50% more with three parts per million copper. Looking at iron content, Brightwell and Washing Soda were both zero, and the Aquarium Bulk One had the highest with 21 parts per million. Aquarium Bulk One had the lowest lithium with zero, and Brightwell was the highest with one part per million, but still really low. Baking soda had the lowest magnesium content with 13, and Aquarium Bulk One had the highest with 76 parts per million. Every sample tested also had zero phosphate. BRS Bulk Pharma was the only option with zero silica, and Aquarium Bulk One had the highest with 59 parts per million silica. All of the samples had zero tin, and the only sample with a zinc impurity was Aquarium Bulk One with 22 parts per million. Okay, so that's the entire list, probably a lot easier to digest by looking at them all at once and taking a quick glance at who performed the best and worst in each category. You can see most performed pretty darn well with a lot of zeros or identical bests in each test level. Looking at this, the uh, first thing I'd note is not all of the contaminants share the same level of concern. In fact, some could be misinterpreted as beneficial like calcium or magnesium. Fact is, I don't think a single one of us is concerned about a tiny amount of calcium. And these levels between 29 and 130 are just not a concern. The reason we look at some of these elements is because when they are at higher levels, like say a few thousand parts per million, it's a fairly strong indication that the source material either comes from a fairly impure source or has gone through very minimal purification steps. 
The most important note related to that is the quality of that material may vary quite a bit as it's very much dependent on the quality of that particular vein of raw materials being mined or collected at the time. Same thing with zinc, iron, or boron. Many reefers actually dose these elements, but that said, like magnesium and calcium levels are also indication of other impurities that we may not be testing for. Also, just because some reefers dose these elements doesn't mean they dose them in uncontrolled amounts. So in the end, I'm not overly concerned about very small amounts of these elements, but if you give me a choice, I'd personally prefer the lowest levels of all uncontrolled contaminants because it's representative of the entire quality picture. So all that said, looking at all this, you can see some media samples clearly perform better than others. The first step for me is to rule out anything I personally determine is not a viable option for our application. The only one that I'm going to rule out is a washing soda. That's because there's no reason to accept the 7 parts per million aluminum and 50% higher copper, as well as the brown tint. And I also have concerns about the consistency of quality because I've opened boxes with perfumed odors in the past, so I suspect there'll be variances in quality over time. You can of course make your own judgment based on the information and data. So looking at just the viable options, I think everyone would like to identify what looks like to be the best available options. And I think it's fairly clear that they're the BRS Bulk Sodium Carbonate, Aquarium One, and the Baking Soda. All of these options will work fine, but the BRS Bulk Pharma performed the best in all but four elements, and I think the alumina and silica performance give it a slight edge over the others. I'd also note that the BRS Bulk Pharma is sodium carbonate or soda ash, whereas the Aquarium One and Baking Soda are both sodium bicarbonate, meaning that you need to add 60% more bicarbonate to add the same amount of alkalinity as the BRS Soda Ash, meaning for the same amount of alkalinity, you're actually dosing significantly fewer contaminants than is really represented here with the BRS Pharma. Well, it isn't the cheapest of the three options. I think most reefers would look at this and agree that the BRS Bulk Pharma is the lowest overall impurity option. So that said, the baking soda is absolutely the most cost-effective option out there, and I think a great value. In this test, it's nearly identical to the Aquarium One product, which is much more expensive, and I just can't see a viable reason as to why I would use the Aquarium One product over the baking soda. So putting a fish label on it didn't mean that it was any better than the off-the-shelf food-grade material in this case. Looking at the other two, while I wouldn't call it an unviable option, I can't see a reason why anyone would select the other aquarium bulk option, which performed the worst in seven of the major categories. Then looking at Brightwell, well at first glance they do score a bit higher in a couple areas. It's important to keep in mind that this is the reef code BP, meaning it's a balance of carbonate and bicarbonate, as well as includes sulfate and borate salts. It's part of a more complete approach to their AB calcium and alkalinity additive system. One of the things I think that we're going to see here is some of the elements are easier to source in high purity options than others, like sodium bicarbonate. And I consider these purity results to be really solid for a product that goes beyond simply sodium carbonate or bicarbonate and looking for more complete solutions. In the end, I think the million dollar question ends up as, is the BRS Bulk Pharma worth the added cost over the Arm & Hammer baking soda? Each individual is going to have to make that decision for themselves, but we need to know the difference in savings. Taking an above average higher demand 100 gallon tank that's consuming a full DKH a day, that'd be about 340 grams of baking soda a month. So doing the math, I'm buying a 13 and a half pound bag of baking soda from Costco. That's an 18 month supply and 42 cents a month. With the BRS Bulk Pharma, which is currently 23 bucks for a seven pound bag, because it's sodium carbonate, you only need 214 grams a month to replace a full DKH a day in that 100 gallon tank, meaning it would last almost 15 months and cost $1.55 a month. So the net cost difference for a fairly common to heavier consumption tank is $1.13 a month. Everyone will have a different opinion on this, but when it comes to reef tanks, I don't think anything has to be dramatically better to justify a buck a month. Even though the BRS option is ours, I'm pretty comfortable saying it's measurably the best options we sent to the lab, and the peace of mind that comes with using the best is probably worth it alone for most reefers. However, there are some functional differences as well. A vast majority of reefers prefer to use sodium carbonate or soda ash over sodium bicarbonate because soda ash significantly increases the pH of the tank and many calcifying corals will grow faster when the pH of the tank is maintained higher. Using soda ash is one of the easiest ways to maintain a higher pH. That said, you can actually bake sodium bicarbonate or baking soda in the oven to actually turn it into sodium carbonate. 
However, once you consider the energy required to run your oven, a very minimal value on your free time, and attention to performing this procedure without adding other unintentional contaminants, the value is kind of a stretch. To get a worthwhile savings, it would probably have to be a pretty high consumption or large tank. But even with those tanks, most have such a huge investment in corals and already high amount of maintenance, where 50 cents to a couple bucks a month is worth the peace of mind of using the highest quality product that comes out of the bag in a usable form. So with that said, I think it's time to answer both of today's questions, starting with, are the off-the-shelf ungraded or tech-graded alkalinity additives just as good as reefing additives? I think I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10, but still a reef certainty. I mean, the food grade option in this case performed really well, but for a variety of reasons, I wouldn't use that ungraded washing soda material. In either case, the results with ungraded or tech chems will be directly related to the amount of effort put into identifying a consistent suitable source material for a reefing application. Answering that second question, does USP or PHEUR pharmaceutical grade source materials really mean that it's any better? I'm going to give this one a 7. I can confidently say that in this case, the USP product did result in the fewest overall contaminants. This is very much related to the raw material refinement, purification processes, and facility standards related to maintaining a USP grade. But I don't think we definitively demonstrated that the USP certification alone guarantees the same results across the board, so I can't give it a 10 out of 10. Related to that, I do think it's valuable to note what all this testing will and won't do. First, there's no universally agreed upon appropriate level for many of the parameters we tested, other than something that's capable of maintaining natural seawater parameters is best. Outside of maintaining ocean levels, there isn't a definitive answer as to how much lithium is too much or any other element. Really a mindset of that level could be or should be safe is just a calculated risk. As long as it's affordable, almost all of us would universally prefer fewer contaminants. Second, well, this is a fairly in-depth look. This is still only a fraction of the total elements. Doesn't give a window into many organic contaminants. And it's possible I could crush up a bunch of fruity pebbles, mix it in with the samples, and it wouldn't show up in the ICP testing. But I think it's safe to say no reefer would dose the fruity pebble mix. We're just looking to evolve the conversation with additional data and attempt to identify what's best for our own individual needs. That means weighing product quality with usability and cost. The net of that equation will be different for each person. And overall best for everyone is just an illusion based on the belief that what's right for me is right for everyone and obviously not true. Lastly, I just want to throw this out there. The type of testing that we share today is always less compelling when the team doing it comes out on top. And in today's day and age, I think it's legit to be cautious of that. I only ask that you watch the entire series because I can already tell you that we do not come out on top in every case. And I can only hope our 10-year history on BRS TV represents the quality of information we provide. Doing all this certified testing with the real analytical lab cost in excess of 20 grand for the whole series. So I certainly hope the community finds all of this as interesting as we do. So in the next episode of the series, we're taking on magnesium purity. And I can tell you right now, this is one where the results are all over the place and almost certainly not what you'd anticipate. For this week's giveaway, I thought the most appropriate thing would be give away some of those Triton ICP testing. So we're giving away five of them for free. Just click that link in the lower left or head on over to the site, click on specials and deals, and then free stuff to win. This topic is one I really hope everyone shares their thoughts on. I'm personally interested in what everyone uses for alkalinity and why. As always, if you value what we're doing here, let us know with a quick thumbs up. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and notification bell because we release new content like this every week. See you next week with another episode of Beerus TV Investigates.